Dear colleague, friends, comrade, brothers and sisters, whenever you are, wherever you are, I greet you with all the greetings that you like. Good morning, good afternoon. Assalamu uh, alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I wish for you a very happy and prosperous life. For you, your family, your community, your society, your nation, and for humanity. Tomorrow is the first day of the new Islamic calendar. And the wish it become very peaceful, tranquil uh, year, not only for the Muslims, but for the whole humanity. Amen, amen, amen. Today, as we see from uh, the advert of my talk today, it is the 12th episode of Fatfada series 5 to 5. Talks about my donkey, the garbage the icons and the initiatives. What is the relationship between all of them? This is what we are going to talk about today. Even this image which is in front of you, which I drew, I drew uh, last week to reflect my talk, but I will explain it to you later on, inshallah. Also today we need to thank my colleague uh, Aya, Abu Zainab for preparing the slideshow uh, for me. And I hope today is Friday, will be a very peaceful day for each and every one of you. This is what I found on my Facebook, which I wrote on 30 July 2012 and 30 July 2013. Thank the Facebook for sending me my statements again. So I can revisit it and redevelop it and make it more meaningful. That's what I have done today on the 6th of uh, August 2021, eight and nine years after I posted them before. This is the first post. I talked about my donkey. I used to love an author or a novelist called Tawfiq al-Hakim in Egypt. I used to read all his uh, stories and novels. It was very easy to read. And he had a, a, a book, or a, not a book, a, a novel called My Wise Donkey. When I was making a hashtag for myself called My Wise Donkey, a lot of people actually from my friends were talking to me, telling me that you mean President So or whatever it is. I said, I don't mean anybody. I mean the story uh, mentioned by Tawfiq al-Hakim uh, and this is written in the 14th and 15th of last century. But anyway, uh, what I am uh, talking to you uh, about today is this post, which I posted it in 30 July 2012. Uh, my homeland is above everybody. Everyone, this is not no 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 debate about it. The issue becomes zibala zibala in the Arabic language or in the Egyptian uh, colloquial language, uh, or uh, is rubbish or garbage. Even the garbage is being collected by uh, the garbage man and his donkey were privatized and given to foreign company. So instead of these people who used to come to our house, uh, remember uh, with their carts, as you can see it on the drawing, with the donkey, and the donkey was extremely professional. The garbage man used to sit even sleeping while the donkey is moving from house to house and stopping at each house. And uh, so the garbage man used to uh, get up from his sleep and go up to ground floor, first floor, second floor, and so on in the building. You know how much we used to give them? 25 pence a month and became one pound a month. Then all of a sudden we found the fat cows or the fat 
uh, uh, cats out of the businesses and the engineers and the municipality workers, the corrupt people wanted to sell it, even not to uh, a local companies, but to foreign companies to make the big cut for themselves. That's why uh, may Allah, I said, may Allah bless the good old days, even with one or two songs to praise the, God, the donkey. I love the donkey. The donkey, one of the most professional creature of God, if you teach him where to go, what to do, he will do it according to the clock and what you have been teaching him. More efficient than a lot of human beings like myself. Even I remember a discussion between a young donkey, which he called in Arabic Gahsh, and his father. The young donkey was extremely upset and he was in hunger strike. His father was used to bring water, drink, food, and he refused. He refused to talk to anybody. His father was talking to him in their language and telling him, what's wrong with you, Sonny? He said, I'm extremely upset with those human beings, full of a lot of hypocrites, bad guys, liars, lying, corrupt people. That's why I can't serve them. He told him, Sonny, you cannot achieve your goals by going into hunger strike. Go and enjoy yourself, your life. Go and eat, be strong, and do what you want to do. This was the advice of the senior donkey to the young Gash. Even there was another song very famous in the Middle East called I Love My Donkey. I love you, my donkey. I love you, my donkey. You have poetry and others. It means very poetic explanation of the value of the quality of certain individuals who became community leaders. Coming back to our issue today of the first post, we replaced the donkey and uh, the garbage collector, the garbage collector. Uh, we replaced them with the rubbish mafia from among us businessmen, engineers, and government workers. What we call them rubbish, rubbish or garbage fat cats. They collect our money, but don't collect our rubbish. The quality and the efficiency of the donkey and his master was far more better than the quality and the efficiency of the rubbish. Not only that, let me explain to you the industry of garbage collector. It goes to the animal, a donkey, and the way we brought him. It goes to the one who make the carts, another industry, took some training, this young man who used to come and collect the garbage, talks about the place where they dump the garbage, and talk about the people who uh, go and search the in, 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 in the garbage for the wealth of gold and silver and coins and the treasure thrown by mistake into the garbage. Then it goes to the animals who sometimes eat from this garbage, such, such as swine and pig. And the operation of recycling of the garbage was started at that time before, before, before other advanced country used to talk about it. So now the, the garbage mafia or the garbage fat cats are making the cut for themselves and we killed a local industry instead of developing it and empowering the local workers, including the donkey at that time. This is the talk of today. And this is my drawing. If you look at it carefully, you find quite a few components, four or five. Uh, the icons of the society or the community, or the role models of the society or the community, or the garbage mafia, or the garbage fat cats are the four people actually who look very nice, 
beautifully dressed, smartly dressed. Yani putting all the makeup on their faces as women. They have nothing to do with the rest of the community, with the rest of the masses. This is actually number one component. Number two component is the donkey, which I explained about himself and their suffering and his dedication of doing his job. Then the cart, which is another industry. So the three, then the man who used to drive this car and go to collect the rubbish. Then you look at the people, the society, the citizens, all those heads lying underneath the feet of the donkey or in front of the donkey or underneath the cart itself represent the suffering community or citizens from the corruption of the garbage mafia or those icons, so-called icons or community leaders. Even when we look deeply with depth, analytical depth to the image, we found that the background of those icons is clear, like shining sky, because they are living in a very comfortable situation. While the background, and this is the climate of, the, of their life, with the background of the rest of the citizens of the country is not stable, it's not what image, sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's reddish, sometimes it's uh, purple, because you don't know where the uh, tsunami wing, uh, waves will be coming from. This is what I summarize my talk with today with you. Second post, which was posted, I think 2012 or 2013, it is the political and religious leaders, which I mentioned, some of them are here. Those four people represent the political and religious leaders, as well as others. Most of those at that time, so-called leaders or role models were burned out. They were burning themselves down. Fallen and their fig leaves fell off them as well to show their nakedness. Alas, we discovered them. They're lions. You know lions? It's not the lion in the, in, in, in the forest. It's the lion in the body. It's above the knee and the underneath the belly button. And the forefront of them deservedly with rudeness are the media professionals. SubhanAllah. Second, the intellectuals, so-called intellectuals. Thirdly, the thinkers and the elites. They are actually in the forefront. Because they badly offended themselves as individuals, their societies, as a community, their homelands, and their history. Unfortunately, those people look back at them. At the time, we discovered, oh my God, I was listening to a discussion by one of the superstars recently, and they felt sorry of the low level he has reached, unfortunately. The choice is several alternative. From choosing new leadership from the public, not from the military or from the security. Choosing new leadership, building new role models, creating moral revolution, particularly inside the media institution. Keeping all these institutions, which I mentioned now to you, away from the political battlefield. Military, away, should be away, far away from any political battlefield. Security and religious institutions. These three are fundamentally have to be away from any political ground. They should not take the lead of the political ground. Holding parliamentary or presidential election, democracy. If we call about democracy, democracy. It could be the first step towards solution, but not the last. 
We need full independence of more institutions. I mentioned military, security, religious, plus judiciary, media, uh, institution as well, and legislative, and 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 all this should be independent. Should be independent if you want to build social democracy. Our longer term is to have to build also a stronger civil society sector around organization. I think people like you listening to me now become sick of listening to this more time, more time, more time. So here he comes again and says the same thing again. Strong civil society organizations, effective young parliamentary, young Youth and parliamentary institution, which I talked about it in a previous talk. Youth and the parliamentary institution. Uh, I mentioned independent religious, uh, independent religious state institution. Laying down the foundation of a new thing, which I'm going to explain to you in a minute. And building what we call independent societal state institution. What do I mean by this? It's independent. Societal state. How can it be societal and then state and institution at the same time? Yes, it can. It can, like an example here in the UK, is a charity commission with the governing all the charitable organization in the country. It is funded by the government, but not managed by the government. So the government institution. It is uh, made accountable to the House of Common or the House of Lord or what you call them, the Parliament. So in spite of the fact that the government gives the fund, but the people they are accountable to are the Parliament themselves. These independent state state institution are like the cat collecting zakat, endowment, waqf, judiciary, cogestry, fatwa, legislative, and other relevant institutions. This is what had been written uh, nine years, eight years ago. So somebody like you asked me this question, but what will happen if our role models Disappear. You know, I gave a, I gave a talk in 2012, I think in summer 20, 2012, in something called uh, the Supreme Council of Young People. You know, of, of a council of young, uh, of youth and sport, in Al Jazeera and Cairo. And when I mentioned in my talk the word icons, removes icons. 300 young people screamed and yelled at me. Said, no! Said, Why? Because all of them are corrupt. It became the word icon at that time, or Rams, is the sign of corruption. Then I took them back after they became quieter to the history, telling them, will you consider an Nahas Basha as a corrupt man? I said, no. Will you consider uh, Saad Zaghloul as a corrupt man said no. Will you consider Mustafa Kamal as a corrupt man said no? And I mentioned quite a few icons from the past. So, but actually, because most of those currently at the time called the role models and the icons have their fig leaves falling out of their groins. So become and they bended themselves badly. Uh, so, this is what happened to me in 2012. And what will be at the emphasis? So, there are, and now the question came to me, okay, if we remove all those people, what's the alternative? Let me talk to you about the alternative. The people responsible for this, the responsibility will be on the ability of whom? Of the public. You have to own the situation. Public, you have to make 
and choose your new leadership from your popular leaders at the moment, not the one which uh, the third leaves falling out of their grind. Uh, popular leaders, the organizations and the blocks, listen to this, who are capable of mobilizing the masses are also capable of presenting their icon and releasing their popular leaders. And this is what scares others who are sitting at the back in the deep state and watching everyone where they are going to go to, what direction of their action will take. So you have as organizations, as blocks, as public to choose your own don't want anybody to make the choice for yourself. So be careful that you've been watched by the anti-humanity inside your own country. Optimism, this is a statement from me, is our habitual practice and soul. Social engagement and participation is our way. And the pleasure of our people, messengers and prophets of, and Allah, our aim, desired aim. This is the second post which has been posted for 2012 or 2013. The third one about initiatives. I found at the time that many political leaders, many social leaders, many religious leaders, many, many media leaders creating initiatives. And they're standing up publicly in a press conference and presenting it. This made me mad at that time. Let me talk about what do I mean by initiative. Initiative is a collective action we do together. Collective action we do together. To find a solution for a social problem or put an end for an acute crisis. This is, but together, together, together. What is the ingredient of success of such initiative? First of all, not to be owned by one group, but should be, but should have as many relevant participants as could be, and don't exclude others. Have a community initiatives, you have to bring to your platform as many people as you want. So I'm still struggling to convince some people to do that after nine years of this statement. Shouldn't be attributed to one leader, one faction, one political party, or this group, or others. No, and big no is capital N and capital no. Not the French no, but actually it is the English no. Does not become a press conference. Not everyone has an idea, call it initiatives, and go to regurgitate it in a press conference. Does not become a press conference, media statement, or sociopolitical precedence to be mentioned. It should be owned by all partners. On the platform, if you have 10 organizations, the 10 people representing 10 organizations should be standing there. If you have logos, the 10 logos should be equally presented there, despite the fact it is your own initiatives. But your logo should not be ahead of the logo of others who are joining you. Discuss, it should be discussed even with some of your opposing political parties, even if you have the courage and the, the, and, and, uh, the gut, you can discuss it with them, or at least informing them. If they won't discuss with you, you can discuss with them before making it public. Should be led by acceptable figures, acceptable community leaders, which might not be a member of any of the members of the initiatives. Everyone as partners should be aware of what? Of the different dimensions of the problems and the means of the solution. 
I for the solution. And every member of this initiative should be made aware of the different dimensions of the problems they are facing and the different means for the solution. We should agree collectively on certain ruling guidelines, guidelines and the criteria. Certain guidelines and criteria for discussion. We should have a timetable for confidential discussion before we come out to the public. There's another timetable for the public to understand and discuss with us. And some more to be added as principles. To all of us as individuals of any initiative, of any initiative, of any initiative. First of all, transparency should be observed. What we should be observed as principles transparency, respect, recognition, equality, empowerment, social engagement, complementarity, building trust, and bridges. Absorbing social, religious, cultural, historical values and manners. These are principles. To be to be taken or adopted by everyone, we should be giving concessions for 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 the public benefit, for the common good, not my political party, but for the common good. Giving concession for the public benefit, as well as principles that can be agreed upon every one of us. So the collectiveness is the key for success. What's happening now, from even from 2012 or 2013, 14, up to now, in the whole Arab world and especially in the Middle East, there's some sincere individuals, good hearted people. Okay. What they do? They do diligence. They are diligent in opinion and they think and they put their thinking on a piece of paper like this. On a piece of paper like this, and put one, two, three, four, five, six, and their political membership will agree, or social membership will agree, or religious group will agree, and they come out with it. This is not an initiative. This is not an initiative. This is not a community initiative. Community initiatives must have all the mentioned items. I mentioned to you one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. No, not this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten points. Ten points. Not anybody can have some itching at his back or her back and putting it as an idea on a table and getting it out to the public and call it initiative. This is not initiative. This, the, 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 the best we can call it is diligence in opinion. But you don't attack them. I added to these three statements what I am writing today. What I am writing today. Number one, did, this has this quite a few, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Tangible questions. Did and this is to the uh, this question is to those people. Did the political, religious, social, media, security, legislative, legal, intellectual leaders, as well as others, learn the lesson of the fallen fig leaves from the groin of their bodies? Did they learn it or not? Did we discover the value of our homeland? particularly after seeing what happened to other countries where humanity's enemies, humanity's enemies, whether they are in locally or internationally, humanity's enemies were successfully destroying their social infrastructure, making their citizens displaced in their homelands and refugees in the neighboring countries. They become aware of that, the price of that. Number C, did we become, uh, this is number, uh, uh, this is number C. Number D, did we realize, realize how the Antichrist 
anti-religious, anti-religion, or religious enemy, the, uh, religion's enemies, made our true orthodox religion to become what? The first source of extremism, isolationism, radicalism, aggressive confrontation, and the bloody terrorism. Do we realize that? Unfortunately, this, what I mentioned, was highlighted by some of our irresponsible idiots from amongst the governmental leadership of the so-called Muslim majority country. Eventually, this led the followers of other religions to be deeply concerned and scared of our religion, unfortunately. We make movies, like the recent one came recently somewhere. We make statement. We make speeches to attack our religion, to attack our own people, to make other people attack us and take us for a ride. Our religion, and this take this, put it as an earring in your ears. Our religion is having is having, and I mean it, and I believe it, if people don't like it, it's still up to them. The ultimate solution for the different types of humanity's problem is only one religion of the full comprehensive book of God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Question number A, B, C, D, E, number five. Did we comprehend what is the danger? We know where it's coming from. And from where its deadly destructive tsunami waves are coming. And who are those creating these destructive social tsunami waves or upheaval for us? Do you know that? After eight or nine years? Question number six, did we understand the concept of hypocrisy and hypocrites? who are the most hostile enemies of humanity. And they are in the bottom of hellfire. We follow them and we keep following them span by span and cubit by cubit, so that if they entered a hole of mastigs, mastigar, we would follow them, unfortunately. This was what we mentioned 19 years ago by the teacher of humanity, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Did we believe that the first reason behind all these problems, or the reasons of behind all these problems are, number one, lying in ourselves, our souls, that command us to do evil tearing down societies, displacing their citizens. This number one, we have to be accountable to what we are doing or what our country is having nowadays. Number two is the ignorance of our the community icons and leadership. So ignorant. Unfortunately, when you look at them discussing things on television, on public platform, on conferences, you become sick, so ignorant. And they don't stop their ignorance at this level. But they're forcing this ignorance around the simple citizen, the simple lay men and women. In this. Do we realize at the moment that poverty, illnesses, and deprivation are the ultimate outcome of what? Of corruption. Here we are talking about our souls, we are talking about our ignorant icons, we are talking about the corruption. This is the question number uh, seven. You know, the first enemy to our homeland or to the homeland of anyone is not an outsider, but insider and is lying behind 
and entrench it deeply inside our hearts, our souls, our insights, subconscious of these sick inside entrenches inside womb, inside the hearts, souls, inside subconscious of this sick so-called social icon and role models because they unfortunately they unfortunately listen see and are aware of what's going to happen to our homeland and they don't they do nothing about it you know why because of the role they were and are playing the anti-humanity the anti-modernity and the way they are treating all of us as the servants and slaves. This is unfortunately happening. So we shouldn't uh, just blame the outsiders, but we have to blame insiders as well. Why is that? Another question came from a young man. And it's not a young woman. Because those so-called icons or so-called social leaders, they betrayed the homeland, number one. They lied to the citizens, number two. They oppressed the young people, number three. They forced the enlightened, intellectual, credible, and the critical community leaders to leave the country because they were tortured. They lived to a safer place. It's number five for their families. Because they detained, imprisoned, tortured, and killed every opponent to or of the brutal dictatorship regime. Nine points for you to answer the question. This was happening. This, of course, made the job of the external hypocritical enemies extremely easy. This is and was the expected role played by whom? Through history, not only nowadays, through history. But we don't learn from the history, we don't read the history. By such a team, low scum traitors who can easily sell their honor, history, and homeland for a handful of gold, silver, or other currencies. This is exactly what's happening not only today, during the history of humanity. What is the solution then? You have been talking now for the last nearly 37 minutes, and I give you a headache. So give us a solution. And what's your message for the young people? One of you might think that I'm a thick, traditional, backward, dogmatic, layman, detached, amongst and one of those uh, people amongst the stone aged creature. He's one of them, is just coming from Al Asr al Hajari, the stone aged people. Okay, fine, and more. Let me express my opinions to you, please. I am not going to defend my opinion, but will, def will be defending my faith, values, culture, and this is where I stand, unfortunately. You are most welcome to change that, but you have to convince me first. And I am ready for you to meet you anywhere, somewhere for an open discussion. Right. The solution is like that. First of all, to listen, I will be listening to your opinion, but to you and you should be listening to other people's opinion. Number one. Number two, to identify the responsibility, who's responsible? 
You cannot say, say that those people are responsible. No. Who is responsible? And who are the responsible people? You know who are they? Each individual citizen. Each individual citizen. Okay? And I'll mention who are the responsible in these coming 10 points. First of all, the individual citizens will be the first responsible for finding such a solution. If you have 5 million people, 1 million people, 1 billion people, you have to share them, share with them the way forward and ask them to find the solution for you. Number two, your smaller family, your smaller family, your mother, your father, the female mother and the male father, who is supposed to be the first unit to nurture the growth of the young kid, male and female. Okay, and this family is considered the first building block of any society, of any nation. It nurtures the young kids, the community's values, morality, manners, culture, principles of religion, and belief, and good behavior. This is point. point number two in the solution. First of all, this, the individual responsibility. Second is your family, your mother and your father. Third is your larger family, including auntie, uncle, and the distant members of the family. Number four in the situation is the school and the teachers who are letting the young people understand the values of knowledge and learning, affiliation and patriotism, freedom and brotherhood, justice and community reconstruction. This will be taught inside the school. Number point number five in the situation is the religious institution. Refining the best of the manners, the spending and giving the learning from the learned wise scholars, not from those people. For example, from people on the public media. Number six in the solution, the thinkers, the intellectuals, theologians, media professionals, political and community leaders, artists, poets, the trati, Writers, journalists, community leaders, and role models who are in leading prestigious position and rise to the erected platform, positioning themselves in the most noticeable position. Those people will be a part of the solution. Number seven, the philosophical. Philosophical methodology of the state and government huh, way of thinking have to read the mind of the government, particularly when it affects the educational syllabus of the school, the school kids and others. Number eight institution, the supposedly independent civil society sector and organization a part of the solution. Number nine, the role of the independent state institution. We have mentioned before all the names of the state institutions, which will become important. Number 10, the capacity of the civil liberty space provided by the government and the states. 10 points towards solution of these problems. Please, young people, be patient with me, because I know that you are not you are frustrated now with me. I know that you will say this question again, which came to me again. What is the way forward then? First, you give a headache, you give us a headache. Second, you put 10 points of solution. Third, well, okay, let us take forward. We are going to go with you. Let's go forward. The way forward is lying between your hands, your own hands, in front of you and behind you. 
above you and underneath you and on the right hand side and left hand side. Find it. You have to look seriously to find it. Don't expect anyone else to find the solution for your own country, your own society, your own family, your own people. Okay, please keep looking for solution and eventually you'll find it. The people of Mecca know it is avenues very well. If Malik is in Medina, no one else can have the eligibility of getting opinion. Malik is the most learned scholar in Medina at the time. Ask people of knowledge, don't ask people of ignorance. And this verse from the Quran, which I put it, uh, Surah Tawbah, uh, verse 122, nor should, be, nor should the believers all go forth together. Okay, together. If a contingent from every expedition, contingent from every expedition remain behind, they could devote themselves to studies in religion or in social problems. And admonish the people when they return to them. No, this, this ta'ifa. This, what do you call it? Uh, here I mentioned it. Contingent. With all of us. Okay? We need those people to be added to the Malik and to the Meccan people and to the people of knowledge. You are young people, the people of Mecca, you are Malik, you are this contingent group or denominated group, as well as you are the people of knowledge. But there's some more condition to do some more work. It's not nothing, nothing is, is easy and nothing is for free. So uh, you are the people of Mecca, you are Malik, you are the contingent group. And you are the people of knowledge. But you have to do the following. Listen to me now, because it's not an easy, there's no job is easy job. Especially when you would like to make a social change, actually, or community change. First of all, you have to be extremely keen and you yourself and make all the necessary sacrifices to learn. Learn, learn. Knowledge is the key for success, number one. Number two, you have to engage yourself in voluntary and social activities and social services to learn how to become a leader one day. Number three, to be very keen to find jobs for yourself. Don't rely on the state, uh, state support. If you can't find, make your own job, register your own company, create your own initiatives, and make the part of the national economy of the country. Number four, be very keen to build your own family, coming back to your own family, your wife, your children, and your extended family. To make Allah and his messengers, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ajma'in, happy with you. Number five, it's not enough to have an aim and objectives. No, not enough, not enough, not enough. So that, yes, my aim is to fight corruption. This is the end of the story. No, 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 no. But you have to do the follow, to draw your roadmaps. Not, and not only enough, this is not only enough to draw the roadmaps, but to find roadmates or comrades. You find responsibilities 
carriers, messages advocates, missions accomplishers, and nations protectors. You have to find all those people. For you, you have a roadmap, you have aim and objective, but you have to find your roadmap, your responsibilities carriers, your messages advocate, your missions accomplishers, and nations protectors. With you, nations are not built by reaction, by emotion, by apprehension, blunders, or random what is built by sacrifices, making initiatives and trials, debating and sparing, creating coalition, building partnership, and making consistent communication with different members of society. Number seven, please, young people, remember what you have been learning or they'll be taught in the school when you were young kids. Okay. First one is nothing beats your own fingernails when it comes to scratching your skin. So go take your care of your own business yourself. Number two is seeking knowledge at a young age is like engraving on a stone. This Proverbs that they taught us in the school when we were young. Teach your son for his generation, not for your generation. Number four, he who taught me one letter is my master, and I am his slave. Or I am her slave. Stand up for the teacher and glorify him. He could have been a messenger. The mother is a school. If you prepare her, you prepare good people of races. Women are the sisters of men. The 1,000 miles journey starts with one step. Justice is the basis of ruler, is the basis of ruling. People are equal like the teeth of the comb. There is no preference for an Arab over an Arab, except for piety. Listen and obey the ruler, even if he was an Ethiopian, black slave, whose head looks like a raisin. The love of my homeland is a duty upon me. Redeem it. I redeem it with my eyes and soul. Every problem has a solution, and the solution is in the hands of the problem solver, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Patience is the key to joy. And more, this is how we are taught when we're young kids. Dear young people, again and again and again, let us realize that the solution for the most complicated and imaginable interconnected problem is simpler than you think, easier than you imagine, and cheaper than you expect. This could happen with some condition. I say it again. The solution for the most complicated problem is simpler than you think, easier than you imagine, and cheaper than you expect, but with conditions. Number one, you have to believe in your homeland and your politicians. Number two, the solution should be local, arising from the culture of needs of the people of the country to be local not from the strange imported solution. Number three, those people who are trying to implement such solution should have the following. 
Okay, first of all, you yourself as an individual have to live in your homeland, then you believe in the citizen. Trust me. Okay. Number two, the solution should be made local, responding to the local needs. Number three, the people who are leading the solution should have insight, insightful vision, a studied plan, not haphazardly, estimated time, period, inside sequential stages, trials, keep trying, but have you have perseverance, longanimity, and enduring hardship. These are the criteria, characteristic criteria of the people who are making the solution or are making the social change. I end by referring to some of the says, wise says of uh, Sayyidina uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Rajallah, and Okay, what he said. A friend will not share the pain with you. A lover will not bear the pain with you. A relative will not stay up instead of you. Look after yourself. Protect it and encourage it. As well. Don't give events more than they deserve. Be sure when you break, no one will fix you. Be sure when you break, no one will fix you. When you lose, only your will will help you. Your ability to stand again will make you the only one to win again. The ability to stand again, only you own it. Nobody else can own it. Don't search for your value in the eyes of people. Search for it inside your conscious, conscious, consciousness. And if the consciousness is relaxed, satisfied, your standing will rise. And if you know yourself, okay, what is said about you will not harm you. But you know who you are. Don't bear the burden of the world, for it is for Allah. Don't bear the burden of livelihood, it is from Allah. But bear, don't bear the burden of the future. It is in the hands of Allah. But bear one burden, how to please Allah. Because if you please Allah, he will be pleased with you, satisfy you, giving you enough provisions, and make you wealthy, protected, honored, and respected. This is my response to my three statements, which I mentioned between 2012 and 2013. So I reviewed them again. The first one is about the rubbish and the donkey. The second one was the political icon and the religious icons. The third one was about the initiative. Thank you very much and a happy new Islamic year to the Muslims, and I hope that this new Islamic year will be prosperous for everyone, uh, uh, Muslims and non-Muslims. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa